On November 8, 2016, a post was made on the Smashboards forum titled, Hungrybox's Weird Habit. In it, the poster describes a bizarre phenomenon. Hungrybox, one of the best Super Smash Bros. Melee players of all time, seemed to be a stronger player when he was on the left side of the stage. This conclusion was the result of 20 hours of effort analyzing positional tendencies, which clearly demonstrated with heat maps that, when it comes to trading blows, Hbox was more likely to come out the winner if he was on the left side. And this pattern wasn't dependent on the stage either, it happened across the board. But why? There's nothing in Melee that would suggest that the left side has an advantage. Maybe it's because moving the control stick left to right is easier, but maybe it's the other way around. Maybe it's because Hbox usually spawns on the right side of the stage, but why does it only seem to apply to him then and not other players? My theory? Well, I think that for whatever reason, Hbox just started favoring being on the left, and after a decade of competing, he subconsciously ingrained the habit. But really, who knows? Hello. Yes, in competitive games, we expect fairness. That is, we hope that when we walk into a match, we have the same chance of winning as our opponents. And in order to address this problem, game designers have always had a little trick up their sleeve when it comes to ensuring balance, symmetry. If both players have a mirrored experience, how could anyone really have an advantage over the other? If your side looks the same as my side, we're chillin', right? So let's test this theory out on one of history's oldest games, chess. Both sides are perfectly mirrored and chess is a pretty simple game, so there aren't really any weird quirks that can be hiding around. But you probably know where I'm going with this, which is that, as it turns out, in chess, the white side has a pretty notable advantage. And the reason is pretty simple. Someone has to go first. And in the case of chess, that person is whoever is playing white. This first move advantage just happens to mean a lot. And the benefit of having the jump is so strong that at the highest levels of competition, the black player isn't always even playing for a win, but a draw. But hey, that just means that chess isn't really symmetrical, right? Since one side gets to move first and the other side doesn't get to move first, the white and black sides aren't actually playing an even game. So maybe symmetry just isn't possible in turn-based games when somebody has to go first. No problem, we'll just count those out and see if we can find balance in a real symmetrical game. So how about League of Legends? Hey, okay, you got me. League isn't actually a perfectly symmetrical game because of the fact that these parts of the map have two very different boss enemies. But look, even if we were to make it so there were two barons or two dragons or two whatever, the blue team on the bottom left corner would actually still have an advantage. Why? Well, without getting too technical, under the hood, League of Legends is actually a 2D game. Unlike Dota, there is no actual height or z-axis to the gameplay, but this flatness is still projected onto a 3D isometric view for the sake of aesthetics, and the result is an asymmetric bias in camera angle. Because of the slant of the camera, it's easier to see up the map where things are smaller in the distance and there's more room for information than down the map. Moreover, many people find that aiming and hitting skill shots on the red side is just a little bit more awkward than the blue side, and sometimes the isometric projection can make your eyes deceive you. While we're at it with isometric oddities, by the way, how about StarCraft 1? In Brood War, it can be important to close off or wall in your base at the start of a match. This prevents your opponent from being able to simply run in with an early attack and shut you down before you even had a chance to get started. To do this, you must arrange your early game buildings in very specific ways. Enemy Zerglings, for example, can run between your buildings as Terran when they're built side by side, but cannot when the buildings are ordered diagonally. What this means is that at the 3 o'clock position where your base is to the southeast, your new units will spawn on the safe side of the wall in. But at the 11 o'clock position, your new units will appear on the enemy side. 
And this is thanks to the fact that when units are spawned into the game, they always appear at the bottom of the building they came from, resulting in what is a very slight disadvantage entirely determined by your random starting position. But all right, no more gotchas. I'm sure we can find a fair fight when things really are perfectly symmetrical. So how about Team Fortress 2? Sure, there are plenty of asymmetric game modes and maps in TF2, but there are also plenty of perfectly mirrored ones as well. Take the King of the Hill map, Viaduct for example. You can slice it down the middle and voila, the red side of the map is a spitting image of the blue, perfectly balanced. But listen, if you've made it this far into the video, you know that resistance is futile and that somehow, some way, someone has an advantage here. So let me just give you a second to try and spot it. Okay, did you find it? The difference is that, believe it or not, the red side has access to better peaking angles than the blue side. It looks like something I'm going to think to stay on red. Opts in for the slightly improved spam angles. But how could this be if both sides of the map are the same? Well, by default, TF2 shoots projectiles, i.e. rockets and grenades, from the right side of the screen. And while it is possible to flip this behavior and play goofy, the vast majority of players have a righty bias. And on Viaduct, it's better to be a righty on the red side than the blue side. It's for this reason that, in competitive play, even on symmetrical maps, teams will sometimes flip a coin or have a fist fight to determine sides. And you know, now that we're on the topic of left and right biases, let's just go over a few more of them to get them out of the way. In Tekken, players usually spend most of their time only ever fighting on one side of the screen, unlike in 2D fighters where it's more common for players to switch sides mid-game. And when playing online, you can choose which side you want to play on, and most people pick the player one side. This works out fine across two connected setups because the camera can just adjust locally to fit the player's preference. But in tournament play, when sitting side by side at the same setup, someone's gonna get stuck with player two, where their controls will be completely flipped around. Literally, every directional input changes. It's kind of like having to do something left-handed when, you know, you're not left-handed. And speaking of dominant hands, let's also address the low-hanging fruit of sports. Lefties are overrepresented in a ton of different sports, primarily because their rarity gives them an edge in terms of surprise and unfamiliarity. The way this advantage manifests can vary, but usually it boils down to your opponent simply being less prepared for lefties. So, okay, maybe we can't count on games with sidedness to be balanced. What's a game where two teams just kind of go at each other. I don't know, maybe Rocket League? Like, seriously, what could go wrong with Rocket League? Well, I guess you can have a dedicated air roll left or right button, which is it's kind of sidey and seems like pros have a preference for rolling left. So I don't know, maybe that affects the balance. Let me just check in with my guy real quick. Yep. Okay, cool. The rolling thing, it's just a fad. There's no competitive advantage there. Rocket League actually is balanced. What? <laughs> you gotta be kidding me. The color? They did 100,000 competitive matches were analyzed and it showed a statistically significant difference. But why? because it's a tiny bit easier to see the blue car on most maps. <laughs> okay, well, turns out that because of the car color, even Rocket League isn't actually balanced. And why are you interrupting me? It's not just a visibility thing? You're saying when it comes to color, the red team just wins more. In an Unreal Tournament 2004, what, what is that? At the Olympics? What, n not just at the Olympics, just in sports in general. Why, why are you talking about testosterone? What, let me guess. It's because blood is red, and, and that means red is a more powerful color. And Okay. All right, fine. Maybe that's like a real theory. Well, you know what? I, I think that's fucking stupid. So, okay. Okay, fine. I need, I need to get to the bottom of this.
Hello, Mir Harrison. We meet again. So listen, I've been learning recently that there are all these weird little competitive advantages that just kind of show up out of nowhere, even in symmetrical games, you know, this whole mirrored situation. So I was just wondering, what do you have going on in your little backwards, fucked up, bizarre world to make all this happen, huh? Spill the beans. What are you doing to fuck up, huh? Yo, what's up? Hey man, you wanna play some chess? No dude, I don't wanna play some unbalanced game like chess, okay? You're just gonna pick white every time and whip my ass with your first move advantage. What? Bro, we can just switch sides each game if you care that much. It's not that complicated. Hmm. Uh... Yeah, I, I guess that works. Wait, but... But actually, what if we play an odd number of games? Because that'll mean one person gets to play white more than the other person. Come on, man. And like, what if your monitor has a higher refresh rate? Or what if my internet is a bit slower than yours and you get more time on your clock? You know, you'd think after thousands of years...